this meeting to order at 724 following our special workshop on March 24th. And um, before we begin, I have to read some information concerning our COVID pandemic. The governor has declared a state of emergency to exist in California as a result of the threat of COVID-19. The governor also issued executive order N-33-20, which directs Californians to follow health, public health directives, including canceling large gatherings. The executive order also allows local legislative bodies to hold meetings via conference calls while still meeting state transparency requirements. The public's health and well-being are the top priority for the city of Yuba City, and you are urged to take all appropriate health safety precautions. So to participate in a virtual meeting, this meeting is utilizing Zoom application for this live broadcast. For this meeting, we will be using your question and answers functionality of this tool in order to accommodate public comment. On your device, the question and answers section of the app is located at the bottom of the Zoom screen that is on the bottom of your screen. For those that would like to, com to comment during this meeting, please enter your comment into the questions and answers portion of the app and be sur sure to state the item you will be commenting on. During the public comments of each item, staff will read aloud the comments provided by the public for all to hear for that specific item. Please be timely with your questions as once the public hearing is closed or the item has been discussed by the Planning Commission and voted on, no more comments will be accepted for that item. May I please have roll call? Chairwoman Blake? Here. Vice Chairwoman Silman? Here. Commissioner Schaefer? Here. Commissioner Adams? Hi, I'm here. Commissioner Brookman? Here. Commissioner Dale? Commissioner Dosher? Here. Thank you. Hi, Lori. We heard you. Glad you're here. All right. We will now stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Josh, Mr. Josh, would you lead us in the Pledge? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So concerning public comment on agendas, not on the agenda. You are welcome and encouraged to participate in this meeting. Public comment on items not listed on the agenda will be heard at this time. Comments on controversial items may be limited and large groups are encouraged to select representatives to express the opinions of the group. Do we have any written comments at this time? There were no written comments. Thank you. And do I have any comments from appearance of interested citizens? Seeing none, thank you. Due to COVID-19, residents are encouraged to attend the Planning Commission meeting via web conference or submit comments by email. Consistent with public health guidelines for social distancing, limited seating is available in the council chamber. But seeing that we have none, I will move to the next item. <laughs> <laughs> so, do any of our fellow Planning Commissioners have modifications for the agenda? If not, I will look for an approval to I'll move continue to approve. with the agenda. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Do we need a roll call vote? Thank you. Commissioner Dosher? Yes. Commissioner Adams? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Vice Chairwoman Silman? Yes. Chairwoman Blake? Yes, thank you. We will now move to item number four on the agenda, which is the approval of minutes from March 10th, 2021. If, yeah. oh, that was the, oh, that was the modifications to the agenda. Oh, sorry. That's okay, that's okay. So now item number four, that was number three, which is for clarification of minutes. Number three is the approval of the minutes from March 10th, 2021. May I get it? Do you have any changes or if not, a motion please? Move to approve. Thank you, roll call. Commissioner Dosher? Yes. Commissioner Adams? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. 
Vice Chairwoman Silman. Yes. Chairwoman Blake. Yes, thank you. So now we're moving on to our first item on the agenda for a public hearing. Um, we are going to have a public hearing to consider use permit 21-02, which allows the use of the existing building as a sports recreational facility located at 350 Bridge Street, Space D. Are you doing a staff report, Ben? No, um, Excellent. Nice. Welcome, Jazz. Nice. <laughs> Let's get right to the to prep myself real quick. All right, good evening, Chairwoman and members of the Planning Commission. Tonight, I will be presenting an application that we received to use an existing building as an indoor recreational facility. So the project proposal, um, the applicant is proposing to use the existing building located at 350 Bridge Street, Space D, as an indoor recreational facility. The Yuba City Municipal Code Section 8-51502 requires the use for an indoor recreational facility in a heavy commercial light industrial district, also known as CM, to obtain a use permit, and that's why we're here to get an approval from the Planning Commission. So the proposal, um, the hours of operation for um, this recreational facility is Monday through Thursday from 5 to 8 p.m., Friday from 5 to 1 p.m., Saturday from 8 to 10, and then closed on Sundays. Um, so he will be providing training classes throughout the week with a maximum of 20 individuals at a time. Um, and then that does include um, the two employees as well. Um, and he does anticipate having intermittent use during the week when no classes are being offered. So this property site is approximately 1.4 acres with about 5,400 square feet of existing building space. Again, it's located at 350 Bridge Street, Space D. And then as, as I previously mentioned, so um, the project site is zoned CM, Heavy Commercial a Light Industrial District. To the north, we do have multifamily residences um, as well as um, to the south. Um, for To the east, we do, um, even though it is zoned R3 multifamily, um, currently there's um, a commercial site as well as a public facility, um, if I recall, it is the Sutter County Probation Office. Um, and then to the west, we do have C3 um, General Commercial. And then to the west, that is um, the future Holiday Inn Express site. Uh, so the proposed use was reviewed and considered uh, to be categorically exempt from environmental review per section 15301 as it is an existing facility. And in our staff report, we did provide uh, details for the findings that are required to approve the use permit. And after review, it was found that none of the required findings would require denial of the use permit. So I do have them listed here. If you would like, I can go into detail. Um, but again, it was mentioned in the staff report. But if you have any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer. So our recommendation tonight is to conduct a public hearing and make the necessary findings to determine the project is categorically exempt from CEQA pursuant to CEQA guideline section 15301 existing facilities, approve use permit 2102 to allow the use of the existing building as an indoor recreational facility located at 350 Bridge Street, Space D. We do also have the applicant online um, if you do have any specific questions for him as well. Um, his name is Beto Alvarado. Well, thank you, Jazz. 
And yes, I would like to take this time, Beto, if you have any comments or additional information that you would like to provide us commissioners. Uh, yes, so I, um, I got some, uh, some questions that um, Jeffrey had uh, sent over for me, one of them being the sprinkler system for the fire department. Um, so the building doesn't have sprinklers. I did have, however, uh, American Eagle fire extinguishers come out do inspection, and we were able to install fire extinguishers everywhere and in any place that was and needs to be necessarily needed. So that way, every place that we use has a place. So we have a fire. When it comes to the fire concerns, it's set, ready to go. Um, ADA compliance, we have all the modifications for the ADA compliance that we had. Had a general contractor come out, do all the, the construction needed. Uh, parking was another question. Uh, and the facility has basically its own parking lot. Um, and we do have our neighboring business is Bellagio Granite, um, which I've already spoken to them about parking and any issues like that. Um, most of the time when they're in there during their work hours, I don't really have a heavy flow of cars or clients coming in. So that parking issue shouldn't be an issue with that. Um, and I have the overflow would be uh, the street as well, which would be on Boyd Street. Um, and I think that's pretty much all the questions I've had as well so far. I don't know if you guys have any additional questions for me. I'd be happy to answer. Thank you, Beto. We will uh, come back to the commission. And I'm certain they may have a question or two for you. So just hold on. Thank you. So would you like to address those questions or concerning the sprinkler system issue that you may have? Yeah, so um, we did go back and forth just once I received comments, once it was routed. So I believe that he has taken care of that aspect of it. Um, and then regarding the parking, we did add um, a condition of approval number four. So um, that does state that if parking negatively impacts adjacent businesses or public right of way at any point, Operational mechanisms are to be put in place to avoid all impacts. Operational changes shall be implemented within 24 hours of notification by the city or result in reconsideration of the use permit by the Planning Commission. So if we do ever receive any issues with the parking, we um, will let him know and then we can come back to Planning Commission to reconsider if we aren't able to resolve the issue. Thank you. The whole purpose of those conditions. <laughs> so we'll start with um, Commissioner Adams. Do you have any questions, concerns for staff or the applicant? Uh, really, uh, Beto, I would just like you to tell us a little bit about your recreational facility and um, kind of what it encompasses, if you don't mind. Yeah, so I used to work for um, Elite Fitness when they first started. Um, Greg Howard is the one who started it all. So I was at their building and I was their trainer since like 2012. Um, I started my business in 2019 um, and I operated within that building for the last two years and I just decided to branch off, right? Uh, so basically we do sports specific training, we do adult training, we do programs for kids, we do anything and everything that has to do with the youth in our town, I would like to do, but run any program that we needed. Uh, like right now, for example, we're running a flag football league. Uh, in the summer, we run a lot of football camps, soccer camps, uh, youth camps. Um, I am also in touch with um, or getting in contact with the, the super county, uh, superintendent county office. So I want to do, we also want to run programs, mentoring and just helping the youth out, the, you know, the problem youth as well. Um, a lot of my clients are police officers and probation officers uh, from the, um, the juvenile detention center. And so I am in contact with them and we're trying to just figure all that kind of stuff that we want to do. So not only do I just want to work with the kids on the athletic side, you know, watch them grow, play college, play professional, but also want to help out the youth in our area who need that little push or just need a little guidance. Um, and we just want to provide something that they can you know, they can have a, something has to do besides going back to their old habits. Right. So. Right, right. Youth at risk programs are definitely hard to come by these days. Yes. Um, is your hours of operation, not, um, is that going to, because it seems as though you have a, 
pretty limited scope on Fridays and Saturdays. Is that going to be adequate for what you're proposing? Yeah, so actually I may have to change the, the hours for Friday and make it from five to basically five to eight, just in case I do have like personal training or we decide to either run like a youth group or anything like that. Saturdays, we're just gonna keep it the same. We just, we just do one class and it's usually like an adult class and and um, and that's about it. Sundays is so your yeah. So your youth, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt that down. Okay. Um, so your youth at risk programs are more like an after school type program and giving kids a place to come um, like in, in between school time and home time? Yes. Is that your vision? Okay. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. So it'd be like after, almost like an after school program. I was talking to a couple of probation officers and um, I was asking, I was actually talking about it. I would like to do like an after school, after school program where they come in, we go through a quick light workout. That we, uh, physical activity is huge. And then we just go through, you know, the mentoring aspects of it of, um, you know, just where do we need some help? What's going on? And um, if I can't help them, I can always get somebody to come in and help them out. All right. Thank you. Those are all the questions that I had. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Schaefer. Yeah, I have a question that's kind of uh, it's consistent with Commissioner Adams' question. Um, so you keep mentioning the word training, and I'm just trying to figure out, are we talking about, like, weight training? Are we talking about cardiovascular training? Are you going to have, uh, you know, elliptical machines there? Are we talking about boxing training, ultimate fighting training? What, what kind of training are we referring to? So training, uh, and, I, and it's, it's very broad, I'm sorry. Uh, so we do everything and anything has to do with strength and conditioning. So weight training, uh, speed and agility. We do uh, explosive development for, again, for all yeah, athletes. Uh, mechanic work, uh, like biomechanics. Um, and the adult side, same thing, just strength and conditioning, uh, body fat. You know, we want to lose body fat, lose weight, uh, and just anything in between pretty much. Okay. Yeah, I did, and that was more of a, just a personal question for myself because I didn't understand what your training meant. But I mean, I love the concept, and I think it's, it should be great for the youth of this community. So that's just my my two cents worth. Thank you. Thank you. Perhaps you're looking for a membership application. <laughs> <laughs> Vice Chairwoman yeah. Silman. Um, you know, I drive down that street a lot for the upholstery hut, which is right right around the corner from you, and. There is a trailer, there's homeless people up against that wall. I, I'm just a little concerned. Is there a concept of kind of cleaning that out a little bit as you get started? It's like a dirt lot there, if I remember. So you're directly behind the carpet place, I think, right? Am I right, Jess? Yes and no. So I'm behind it off to the left. Um, I basically have my own entrance and my own lead way uh, when it comes to, and that's one thing too, that I, when I came to look at this place back in the summer, that was going to be one of my concerns. Um, the one thing that I do do is I make sure that all kids stay within the facility until kids get picked up. Again, referring back to the, uh, my indoor parking lot, uh, make sure that they stay, they are there until the parents are there. We don't send them off to run on the streets. Even with our adult classes, we do like to go out and run, but we limit that when it's dark. We don't do that. Um, we just try to keep everything in-house, and especially really early in the morning or really late at night. Um, I lock everything up. I, may, I have access to have my own gate, so I can lock that up okay. every time I come and go. Okay, thanks. Yeah, it's, it, it definitely needs that. <laughs> Thank you, and Commissioner Dasher. No questions, ma'am. No questions. I have a quick question. Beto, I can't see you. Did you used to work for Yuba City Unified School District as a PE teacher? Uh, no. no. I, I did run a, it, it was a youth, like, at-risk program for uh, super, uh, for, the, for the county office of education, and it was like a, uh, like a, healthy living thing so like a lifestyle working out eating healthy staying off drugs um they called we called it um corf um and uh i did go out to and met with uh, the pe classes during like all the freshman classes during their pe class so maybe you saw me then excellent thank you 
All right, so we're now we're going to start the public hearing to consider use permit 21-02, which allows the use of the existing building as a sports recreational facility located at 350 Bridge Street, Space D. So the public hearing is open. If there are any members of the public who would like to address the commission on this issue, please provide your statement via public comment and state your name and address for the record. So do we have any public comments online? No comments online. Thank you. Any in the audience? Manny, don't hold back. <laughs> All right, well, hearing no further comment on this issue, I'm going to close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. So do you have any additional questions or concerns for staff and or our applicant? Otherwise, um, if any commissioner is ready to make a motion. Chairwoman yeah. Blake, sorry. Um, I just wanted to clarify as well that tonight um, we are not limiting the hours of use for his um, facility, that this is only going to be for the approval of being able to use the facility as an indoor recreational. Right. Mm -hmm. For a use permit and CEQA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Uh, I motion that the commission make the determination that the project is categorically exempt from CEQA, pursuant to the CEQA guidelines section 15301 on existing facilities. I'd also uh, make the motion that the commission ap approve the use permit 2102 to allow the use of the existing building as an indoor recreational facility, and it's located at 350 Bridge Street, Space D. Thank you. Do we have a mo second? Second. Thank you. May I have roll call, please? Commissioner Dosher? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Adams? Yes. Vice Chairwoman Silman? Yes. Chairwoman Blake? Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well done. And congratulations, Beta. We look forward to seeing what you can and will do with our, the youth in our community. So <laughs> congratulations again. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh-huh. So now we're going to move on to item number six on the agenda, public hearing to consider tentative division, subdivision map 20-01, Faith Court subdivision, that will subdivide a four-acre parcel into 17 single family residential lots located on the south of Monroe Monroe Road and east of Royal Ranchero Road. So uh, b before you do that through the chair, oh, yes, this is Commissioner Schaefer. I need to recuse myself from hearing this particular item. Uh, my wife has a working business relationship with the applicant, so I need to recuse myself. Thank you, Commissioner Schaefer. We'll come get you when we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just going to leave you back. Enjoy the nap. <laughs> So now we shall have a staff report from Ben. Oh, really, Ben? Oh, sorry. Yeah, you, you, I'm sure you've had your <laughs> she did fill such a good tonight. Job. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, welcome, Chairwoman and Vice Chairwoman and, and the rest of the commission tonight. Um, it's nice seeing you at the podium. And so, or, or at the, I guess, at the dais. I don't know which one we're at. Um, so I guess before I start, I, I wanted to uh, introduce my new assistant planner. She's been in the background here, and I didn't want to wait to the end of the meeting. So, so Ashley Potochnik um, is her name, and she's uh, well traveled, and she's uh, started with us just uh, last Monday or this Monday, nice. and so uh, we've thrown her in the deep end and, and got her going. So um, um, I look forward to having her present to you soon. Welcome. So, um, so with that, I guess just to confirm, are any of the applicants online? Mm -hmm. Are any of the applicants joined? We do have Conrad online. Okay, great. Okay, so the item before you is in regard to tentative subdivision map 20-01 Faith Court subdivision. So, for those that um, have have been around, this is um, somewhat of a long-standing project. It originally came to us back in uh, 2014 and then approved in 2015, modified again, and then um, modified 2017 and back here. And I'll get into it here a little bit. So the property, um, so tentative subdivision map 20-01 will re-subdivide a four acre parcel into 17 single family residential lots in a private gated community. 
the new residential lots, we provide it full city services. And so this property, it's, um, is, dr is directly adjacent to the recent um, Dunn Ranch Interwest subdivision that, that came before us here a month or so back. And so um, it's, it's Roy Ranchero, Monroe, and then it's 10 acres, or it's, excuse me, it's four acres, 10 currently divided into 10 parcels. And so what the applicant is coming before us is to re-subdivide this into 17 parcels. Mm. And so the property is located on the south side of Monroe Road and approximately 750 feet east of Roy Ranchero. So here's the, uh, the existing subdivision. It kind of shows how the, the, it was a carve out of the, um, the Methodist church site where uh, you would ha have the, um, it sticks to the, track and then the church facilities down here to the to the right and so here's the proposed subdivision so here's the proposed tenant subdivision what's being considered tonight and so let me make sure i got it right so it's it's again it's the 17 versus 10 and really to be clear what is going on here is that this they're these are it's a it's a narrow it's a shallow lot and so what they've been struggling with since the beginning of this is they only had so much room to, to operate because they're trying to um, fit it within the property adjacent to the track and then um, consider it of the length with the cul-de-sac length on how to service it and then, and then how to fit it. And so what they do is they, what they have is, is they've had a shallow depth lot that they've been struggling with since the originally concept in 2014 and where they originally, um, they came to us with separated sidewalks and then it came back to the planning commission to allow attached sidewalks because of the special circumstance with the narrow width. And then where they've come now to um, a gated community with it, with it being private, the city has basically said, okay, we'll, we'll give up the public sidewalk requirement, which then allows another five feet because the setback is off the curb. And so it's, it's a private development and gated um, Conrad could definitely with Interwest, or, I'm sorry, with Hilbers Inc. Um, will definitely add to some of the design elements and how they plan to market it. Um, but that is the big difference I want to note is, is that it's a gated private community, no sidewalks, and that that's basically giving them an additional five foot to try to come up to more of a standard size lot depth, so then they can facilitate the construction. Um, what we have here is, is the general plan land use map that shows what's going on around it. Basically, you have R1 zone property all around it. Um, there is non-conforming existing church that's been there for many years. And then you have zoned office park down here that's not built out yet. So um, one of the things I want to call out that, that is came up recently just for discussion between the developments with with um, two-story houses always seems to be, um, you know, of conversation and just on how that affects um, property and, and, and who goes where and who notices what and how we do it. And so there was some recent discussion between Interwest and Hilbers regarding just what is the setback if they need to have a two-story home, um, you know, for either development to make sure they're on the same page. And so um, through discussion, I told them what this current zoning code requires. So the zoning code requires a 25 foot or 20%, whichever is less than minimum for a rear yard setback. So um, on a big lot that maybe the 120, 130 foot deep, typically you'll see that 25 foot setback. When you get with a shallower lot, you start to get into this 20% rule where, so if you have a 93 foot wide lot, then that technically your setback is now 18.5. You know, you start to get into this area. And there was some concern that we have an option for single family homes where they do this averaging. So if you have a weird shaped home, you could, you could go into that rear yard as long as the average rear yard um, doesn't exceed the requirement. And so to be clear with the zoning code on two story homes doesn't allow that averaging. So the closest these homes could be for the rear yard on this side is 18.5 for the for the for the 93 foot lot, and then it gets a little goofy for one lot down here that um, is part of a future phase of 
of the Dunn Ranch where you have a little bit shallower lot where it's the, the cul-de-sac lot that it gets a little bit. Where this one, um, it's 73 and a half, you would get into like a 15 foot setback, but there would definitely probably be um, a special layout for that that Conrad could add to with it being a cul-de-sac lot. I break it. I ran out of juice. There it goes. Um, so compatibility. So staff looked at the project, is on the edge of the Terrebonne residential area with homes to the north across Monroe Road and an approved but yet unbuilt single family residential subdivision to the west. Properties to the east and south are a church and a school respectively, both of which are considered to be compatible with the single family residential uses that are being considered for this proposal. I'd like to comment that the road on Monroe would would mirror the, the north side, so it'd be in, and it would tie into the recent development. So, so the width of Monroe will be consistent as you go down, and basically a mirror of what's there now. So traffic, um, you know, really the, this project in the general plan has been zoned R1 with a density that's more dense than this. Um, it's been, and that, that area has been analyzed <clears throat> um, as previously discussed many times um, with development as it occurred with Western Parkway and the different subdivisions over time. And so with an approval, original approval from 15 lots to 10 lots to 17 lots, that incremental change to, to the two additional lots is it, um, we don't feel, and based on the studies, it, that would warrant an impact to the level of service on those roads. They, there's, a, there's capacity on Monroe Road, Rower Ranchero. Um, there is a note that it always comes up is that what about the, the George Washington Highway 20? Um, you know, it's, and so with that, it, it's really, to be blunt, it's just a mess that the city's decided to live with. And in the general plan, we've allowed the level of service to go to an F. Um, not that it's an F now, um, but, but it's allowed um, any connections to the state highway system. And, and with the operational changes with Western Parkway, there was a decision to keep Royal Ranchero open so people could still travel that way. Originally, it was designed to be a cul-de-sac and push people to Western Parkway and use the signal. And so really, it's um, that traffic, um, I guess I could say it is what it is until it backs up and people go to Western Parkway. Um, but there's definitely been operational considerations with Caltrans on how they've phased the signals and how they mark the road. And we are obviously um, coordinate with safety, but as far as the delay, that wasn't a factor into this decision for the number of homes. So additionally, a lot of, um, I don't know if any public's online, but it's a lot of times with development or if there's planned development, there's, there's been a longstanding concern about Monroe Road opening to the east where we would uh, build a bridge, go across the, uh, the small segment of Live Oak Canal there and connect that. There's no intention and no requirement with this development that that would happen. So after reviewing the project, um, in considering the mitigated negative declaration prepared for the project, including with the proposed mitigation measures, recommending approval of TSM 2001 for 17 single family residential lots will not generate any significant environmental impacts. And then with consideration of the necessary findings, um, right the necessary findings are in regards to a subdivision map, there is no findings that would require us to recommend denial for this map. And so again, they're in the staff report and I'd be happy to get into each finding um, at the plan commission's discretion. And so with that, um, I'm available to answer any questions and in um, and, and the recommendations as stated. Thank you, Ben. Before we um, ask our commi fellow commissioners for questions and answers, you mentioned that we have our applicant online, correct? Conrad, you hear us? Oh. It's on Zoom. <laughs> you know, I wonder if we could, can we invite them, the teams? Oh, hey, Brian, can you make him a panelist on Zoom? Oh, to no sound. 
Um, so bear with me for technical difficulties here. And so how would I send him a, so he could chat with us. It would be nice to get him on the phone. Can we call him on the speakerphone? Let me, let me try that. So Conrad, um, if we get in the chat box, we'll send you the phone number. No problem, Ben. <laughs> Hi, this is Conrad. Hey, Conrad, can you hear us? I can hear you now. I can't see anymore, but I can hear you. Oh, okay. Well, I apologize for that. I guess um, we didn't get the link to the right person here. But um, So we, we got you online basically for the commission to it could hear you. Sure. Do you have questions, or would you like me to talk about the project? Or? Well, first, and thank you, Conrad, for being here. Lori, can you hear Conrad just fine? Okay, great. All right. So yes, Conrad, if you have any additional information to um, glean some information to us as commissioners on this project, please. Well, our, our plan for the project, you know, it was 10 lots. We w they were 150 feet wide and 92 feet or so deep, very shallow, but very, very wide. It just didn't make sense to have all that side yard. Uh, so we did reduce them to 75. And uh, so I think, which is still very wide, we can get three car garage, we can do some RV parking behind the fence. We'll have a strict HOA, uh, keep the project, you know, very nice, gated community. Uh, we're gonna, my first plan is to do a build a suit. So we're gonna offer the lots for sale with one architect uh, drawing all the homes per the, you know, the buyer's request, and then we'll have a strict architectural, you know, control, and we'll make sure they all kind of blend together, look like a really nice community, um, so there won't be a lot of homes that are, you know, not painted correctly or a different type of, you know, tutors and French and farmhouses, and we just kind of want to keep it all kind of a matching subdivision. Um, I think it'll be very nice. I think it's for a lot of people that want to downsize but still want a very nice home. So they're not going to be real big, you know, 2,000 square foot, something like that, but very high quality. Thank you for your comments. I'll now ask our commissioners if they have any additional concerns, questions uh, for staff and or our applicant. We'll start with Commissioner Adams, please. As though you're not ready. <laughs> so I, um, I'm thinking that this concept is going to be similar to what was on Lincoln Road next to the Tanglewood um, project. Is that kind of your fourth stop? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm oh, sorry. I'm not, it's similar to that. It's also similar to the one on Blevins Road, which we, you know, I did years ago. Uh, which was gated, and, but those were both those homes. I think are going to be larger. Uh, these will be a little bit smaller than those, but right, still at the right. same scale and quality. Right. And then you said about two thousand square feet is about the maximum that you can fit on these lots, of course, except to the back of the cul-de-sac where you have a little more. Uh, no, I don't. Space I don't think that'll be the largest. Space. I think we can go two-story in some cases, um, and get larger. Uh, with a smaller footprint on the ground. Uh, but I think 
the market is looking for a smaller. My, my, I guess what I'm thinking is the client that I'm looking for is the person that had the big home and they want, you know, the kids are gone. They want to downsize. They want to travel, but they want a real nice home and a nice private gated community. So I'm thinking they're going to be on the smaller side. Yeah, I think I, I think I want a yeah the single family home with possibly a little gate because they're seventy five wide, so you can have a two car garage with an RV, or you can have a three car garage pretty comfortably. Uh, and some of the RVs could sit behind the fence. You know, I think oh we're going to allow that uh, as long as they're behind the you know the fence area, um, and that way people can travel. You know, they can take the RV and go places, but it's still a neat front yard, so it looks nice. But yeah, single family, not uh, not like condominiums. Um, ben, I don't know if this is a, a question I can ask or not, but um, HOA considerations, and this is definitely going to, as you stated, you have an HOA. Um, is that something that you've thought through as to what restrictions you're going to place on this uh, these owners as they move forward and what the HOA fees are going to look like um, for this uh, community with 17 residents? Well, we've, I have an HOA going now in Grass Valley with the uh, upper end type homes, but there happens to be 43 of them. So those HOAs are like $82 a month. So it's not too much. And that covers all the front yard maintenance as well, of all the landscaping. So that way everybody's yard looks just, you know, perfect every week. Uh, so if you get someone that's not taking care of it, this solves that. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. All the RVs are behind the fences. Uh, front yard landscaping is maintained. It's just one street in and out, maybe three street lights. There's not a lot of HOA fees there, except the entry gates, a little bit of landscaping. Uh, so they, they won't be very high. We haven't got to the point where we've come up with a price yet, but it won't be very much. And I did note that you were still allowing street parking on both sides. Is that correct? Did I read that wrong? Yes. Yes, that's correct but for a limited time. So the way it was developed, the way I've thought it through, we haven't finalized it yet, is cars, if it has a two-car garage, cars have to be in the garage. If they sit in the driveway, it has to be your third car and it won't fit in the garage, uh, meaning they're occupied. Um, and no one sitting on the street longer than like 48 hours. So we have all these things that still work out, but that's kind of how it goes. We keep it. Thank you. Vice Chairwoman? No questions. No questions. No, thank you. Okay, thank you. So now we will uh, move this to a public hearing to consider tentative subdivision map 20-01, Faith Court subdivision that will subdivide a four acre parcel into 17 single family residential lots located on the south of Monroe and east of Royal Ranchero Drive. It's now open, so if there are any members of the public who would like to address the commission on this issue, please provide your statement via public comment and state your name and address for the records. Do we have any public comments online? No public comments online. Thank you. Do we have any in the audience? We indeed do. Yeah. Is this on? Yes, it is. Yes. Um, concerning two-story homes, uh, I was at a few planning commissions, and a lot of people got a little upset when you have a dwelling. So this dwelling would probably be to the west of you. That's not a two-story. Um, or how many two stories do you plan on putting on the uh, west side of that property, facing down on the new subdivisions to your west? You know, we, I don't know because we're going to pre-sell them and, and talk to let the client kind of work on the design. But one of the restrictions is we try not to have windows facing each other, you know, the neighbors to the left, neighbors to the right. We try to block them. So, you know, we keep take that in consideration when we're designing the homes. Um, looking at the back, I mean, you may have some facing the west. We'll try to keep two stories on uh, the east side. I think that's what my first choice. So it's overlooking the track and you don't get, you know, a problem looking down on a neighbor. 
Um, so get to watch free football games gonna, too. Pardon me. Get to watch free football games too. There you go. <laughs> okay, I was just because this this topic has been brought up in the past concerning the two story homes uh, overlooking homes down below. That was just a just a concern, and you answered it. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Before you leave, yes, could you please, for the record, state your name and address? Manny Cardoza, Yuba City citizen. Thank you. All right. Seeing no additional public comments, we'll go ahead and close this public hearing and bring the matter back to the commission. Any other further questions or comments for staff and or the applicant? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion. I'm prepared to make a motion for approval. To the chair, I'd make... Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. okay. That's all right. I'd make a motion that... Uh, we approve the uh, information on the subdivision that we uh, received this evening consistent with staff's recommendation in the staff report. Looking for that second now. <laughs> yeah, I'll second that motion. Thanks, Lori. All right, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Dosher? Yes. Commissioner Adams? Yes. Vice Chairwoman Silman? Yes. Chairwoman Blake? Yes. And Vice Chairwoman Silman is bringing back our fellow commissioner. <laughs> Welcome back, John. <laughs> All right, so moving on to agenda item number seven, amend planning commission bylaw section E2 related to Sutter County planning commission representative. So Ben will take it from here. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Conrad. <laughs> He's like, see ya. <laughs> Are you muted? I am muted. There I am. Okay. Well, um, what do I got? I got to remember what I'm talking about. Bylaws. Okay. So... So what do I have? So I, I have the bylaws regarding the planning commissioner representative to the Sutter County Planning Commission. And so this is um, this has come up the last couple of years um, based on based on avail people's availability, um, potential uh, conflict, and then also then also to match um, uh, what the current state government code says regarding. Um, the mayor's selection and how the city does our annual process for the selections of the boards and chairs. And so wh what I'm recommending here is that I took a look at our bylaws just to see with the municipal code, our bylaws, and then Sutter County's planning commission on how they accept it. So, so historically uh, in the bylaws, it says annually, the newly elected chairperson, chairperson shall be recommended by the planning commission for appointment to the Sutter County planning commission in, in the event, the chairperson for any reason does not wish to serve on the Sutter County planning commission. Then the planning commission shall elect a member of its body to serve on the Sutter County planning commission. Notice of such recommendation shall be transmitted to the city council by the secretary and the city council shall forward a set recommendation to the board of supervisors. So we've had this, this process depending on when new planning commissioners come on, when we do the election here for the chairperson, and then depending on um, who's available and who do it, that, there's a selection on the planning commission, and then I go put it on the city council item for approval, and then if there's any questions or they want to do any, any interviews because they're approving it, then that, that causes this delay where a lot of times I don't have a Sutter County rep there until June. You know, where you look on it historically where, where it's, it's played out. And so one of the thoughts is um, what's amend this to match the state um, code regarding general law cities. The mayor with the approval of the city council shall make all appointments to boards, commissions, and committees unless otherwise specifically provided by statute. So basically there's this code that the city uses annually that uh, we do um, starting in November, December, they have a selection committee with the mayor and the vice mayor. They sit down and they go through the laundry list of the commissions and the um, a board appointee um, for the for the various um, 
agencies that they sit on or commissions that they sit on. And so, so the idea was instead of us picking, instead of, when I say us, instead of the planning commission picking, then go to the city council, which is usually de facto and they respect the, the commission, but to avoid back and forth and how that in, in potential conflict and changing every year and being late, it was, Hey, let's establish it to match what we're doing. And the, the chairman, the, the mayor would then pick, he'd reach out to the commission, whoever's uh, interested in this November, December timeframe would um, meet with them and then they would pick somebody and it could be the same person year after year. It doesn't have to change with the chairman. So, um, you know, there's definitely um, a change. And so, um, you know, and so per the bylaws, the way you make it, you have the privy to change the bylaws. And so the way that you change the bylaws is we agendize it and then um, you vote on it. And so it's pretty simple in that matter. And so that's basically what I have tonight. And so there's um, what I've done uh, with Jaspreet's help is that we've basically um, butchered that, that paragraph there that where it says, where we're proposing to say annually, annually, excuse me, annually, the mayor shall make an appointment to the Sutter County Planning Commission. Notice of such appointment shall be transmitted to the city council for approval by the city administrative clerk and the city council shall forward said appointment to the Sutter County Board of Supervisors. And so it really shortens the cycle, I guess, with it. Um, with that, there's, there's my recommendation to, for that change, um, but there's definitely options for the planning commission with it being your bylaws, if there's a, if another way you'd like to see it handled, either not do it, modify it, um, um, or any other variable in between. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ben. Anything to simplify this? this it, it, it avoids the back and forth. And so I, I get where um, you'd like to have your, your vote. The planning commission makes that decision, but really what it's turned into is um, this delayed process that then has to go to the city council, you know, and it, and it turns into kind of a delayed process that we're never really um, up to speed on. There, nobody's this, nobody is sitting there in January when they really need to be if there's an item that comes up. Thank you. So question, um, this evening, are we able to make the recommendation for action? Yep. Okay. Yep. I wasn't sure if we needed to agendize it. So, yeah, so on the agenda, we noticed it as necessary to, okay. to uh, make action on it. Perfect. So any um, commissioners have some discussion points or questions for Ben? Yeah, through the chair. I, can you put the, uh, the, the modified document or the modified language? So what it says there, if I'm reading it correctly, it says annually the mayor shall make an appointment to the Sutter County Planning Commission. So my, my question is, is, is it understood then that that appointment has already been talked to by the mayor and agrees to sit on that commission? Because if the mayor makes an appointment and that person doesn't want to do it, well, then what? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, well, and the mayor makes a recommendation, but it has to go to the full council. And so um, all of these, it's the mayor's recommendation, full council votes on it. Um, I, my understanding, there's never been that conflict where they don't respect um, uh, one of the participants, you know, needs to, to, to do that or not. And so my, my understanding would be that anybody interested in being that representative would let the clerk know we would coordinate a, a meeting as necessary if he, if he needed, and then they would make that recommendation. Okay, so that, that doesn't have to be, that language doesn't have to be reflected here. It's kind of understood in the background that. We that could person's... delete the whole segment, actually, and, and the, the government code gives the mayor that authority to do it. Um, this just identifies it in the bylaws on how it's chosen. So, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm just trying to understand if that person doesn't want to do it, do they have the opportunity of, at some point of telling the mayor, don't recommend me because I don't want to do it. If the, Cause this, this language just says the mayor shall make an, an appointment. We could definitely add um, a, a, a blip in there about, um, I, I can't think of it on the, on the wing here. So notice of such an appointment shall we? Um, right, because I guess what I'm seeing Ben is, you know. To a willing, Sutter County Planning Maybe to a, yeah, to a willing Sutter County Planning Commissioner. Just something to the effect, because yeah. if he makes it, an appointment is an appointment, I mean, you're doing it. 
<laughs> I mean, it's not. I hear. You have the option. It's, an, it's you're you're doing it because he appointed you or she appointed you. I'm happy to add. I'm I'm happy to add that in. That says um, we could put a statement in there that says the mayor will make an appointment to a willing uh, Yuba City Plan Commissioner um, representative. That'd be fine if if you can do that. That'd be yes, fine. Absolutely. I mean, that's what I'm just trying. I to mean, that we, we, it's free. It's an open slate right now. So walk me through it though. So we come on the board. Let's say you're a new planning commissioner. We have our full board, full meeting. So is he going to have that done before we even have our first meeting? Who he feels to appoint? So uh, typically this year we appointed them in um, February. And so um, the planning commissioners, they're, they're up for, I believe three and two. Wait, how many we have? We have seven. So it's three and three with uh, one from the Sutter County re representative. And so they alternate every two years. And so um, the off year, um, unless there's a resignation, it would be easier. They could, it would just be when they make that recommendation, typically by the time they start the interviews in December and then actually make it to the city council, it's usually the end of January, it's sometime in February that they'll make that. And so there'll be discussion. So next year, starting in November, December, anybody wants to be um, a Sutter County representative, then we, the, the clerk would send out the notice and there'd be, um, you'd throw your hat in the ring. And so for this year being a little different, being the first year, um, I, I'd have to coordinate the logistics, but I anticipate some sort of email, some sort of correspondence coming from the city staff saying, is anybody interested? And then um, we'll work with um, taking that then to city council. And I'd be happy to share if there are anybody interested. Um, in that, and so I could bring that to the mayor. Well, I, I just know at the last planning commission meeting, oh, sorry, through the chair. Yeah, of course. That, um, yeah, that Stacy Brookman had said that. That's why, you know, that's kind of the norm that it's been in most planning commissions. It's kind of a discussion between the, mm -hmm. but uh, it, nothing to the mayor, but it almost seems like a little micromanaging, and, but I, uh, that's just my two cents. I think the. Um, and I, I don't, don't know what the intent is. I don't want to speak for him. Um, um, I, th I think the concern for for him is that he, since he has to recommend it, he likes to have a, a, a part of the um, um, recommendation. Mm. Okay. For the government code. Sorry. And it, it very well said, and it aligns with the government code. It was a very important part. Is that there, there's probably not really an urgent need to to amend the suggested modification here to note of a willing participant just because a person can't be made to unwillingly serve in a position like that. You know, certainly if the person doesn't want to do it, they can sure. say no. And so yeah. I would imagine just from a practical standpoint, the mayor would ask first, you know, do you want to do this and, and would you like to be appointed? Um, because it would be sort of odd to point someone and say, I don't really want to do it, but they could. <laughs> sure. That was all I had to add. Thank you. Commissioner Adams, do you have any additional? Yeah, just a comment. Um, when I read the statement, I think we may want to state that the mayor will appoint um, a city and planning commissioner. The way I read it almost feels like it's a general statement that he can appoint anyone. I don't know if that's just an assumption based on where it's located in the bylaws, but just as clear a point of clarification, um, I thought I would bring that up. Thank you. Do you have any? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Moody, um, and I don't know if this is the case or not, but does um, Rosenberg's rules have any impact on the modification of the bylaws? No. Um, but I would add that I need to come back when reading through this. There's other um, updates in the in the bylaws, such as the Rosenbergs, because currently we're using Rosenberg's format, and it calls out um, Robinson Roberts' rules and regulations. So, so the bylaws haven't been updated for a while, and there are some um, different um, issues that I need to work through over time when we we tackle them. But th my understanding is there's no conflict with Rosenberg's rules of order. All right. Um, so with that, if one of the commissioners is ready to make a motion on the guidance given for bylaw amendment from staff. Can I say so moved? <laughs> there you go. 
you know. Oh, so say moved with the clarification regarding that it is a, a Yuba City Planning Commissioner representative. A sitting Yuba City Planning Commissioner, right, Laurie? Thank you, yes, I'll second that motion. All right. Excellent. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Dosher? Yes. Commissioner Adams? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Vice Chairwoman Silman? Yes. Chairwoman Blake? Yes. Thank you. So we have approved staff recommendation. So we're moving on to future agenda items and I'll ask Ben to provide an update. Okay, so um, easy stuff. Fun stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, I introduced our new planner. And so I'm um, again really excited. And she'll be um, here and getting you in the weeds in various stages with the planning commission as she starts her career with Yuba City. So we're all excited with that. Um, I wanted to, a couple, I have some bullet, bulleted lists, but please jump in and, and ask me questions when I'm working through it. So annexation. So right now, Phase one of the Bogue Stewart Master Plan is um, into LAFCO. And so LAFCO is anticipating taking a vote on the, the phase one, so the Newcomb Ranch and the parcel close to Bogan Railroad at their next meeting in May. And so that's pending. And so um, hopefully they start seeing some um, uh, momentum with the, the Bogue Stewart Master Plan. And then with that, the county and the city are still working out the master tax exchange agreement, but um, we, we were saying we're getting closer and closer with that. Um, and then with that, there's also some annexations occurring with the Gilsizer Slough boundary. And so the Gilsizer Drainage District, the sphere of influence for that, we're working with the Gilsizer District and LAFCO and the city on, on, on modifying that boundary. And it's really for financing. And then also with um, CSAG, these boundary modifications when we annex new property. So we're working through that behind the scenes. There's no new general plan amendments or rezones actively in process regard, except for Harder. And so Harder is a big project. It's been kind of brewing and brewing and we're finally trying to get it over the hump. And so, um, so I'm, I'm excited to bring that forward to you. We're shooting for the 14th. Um, there's a lot going on with that project. If I could get everything together in time, they get it noticed. And so um, the 14th or the following meeting thereafter. Um, Subdivision maps. So, um, so you, um, it's nice to see. Um, recently, the Sanborn and the East Sanborn parcel maps um, recorded, and so they're out there building roads and putting in underground pipes right now. And then also the Hooper Ranch um, subdivision, um, they recorded the first phase, but they're out um, um, actually starting construction where they're they're out on site. And so I talked to. One of the um, financial officers there with Riverland Homes out of Sacramento, and um, they're looking to meet with us next week about um, starting some model homes. And so, uh, it's amazing how fast some of that goes when when they're ready to go. And so, um, <clears throat> those two projects you might be hearing about them, but those are two that we recently approved that are starting to have some traction. Appeals. So one not so great is that um, the Domain Estates Three. Project so those 13 units off of uh, Blevin Kenneth Way, there was an appeal filed for that um, from the Western property owners regarding uh, two-story homes and conflicts with the um, Thule Parkway. And so there's some long-standing issues there, you know, with um, with existing property owners and development occurring and, and and how that Parkway affects them and development affects them. And so. Um, but that is planned. It was it was planned to go to the city council at their last meeting, uh, based on the developer and the um, app, the pillants. They um, are meeting next week to see if they could hash it out before going to the city council. So, um, <clears throat> so we'll see how that works out. But that is in the works right now. So if you hear about that, um, housing element update. So another big thing is is with the city and their regional housing needs um, that come through from the state. And in the timeline, we're required to do a housing element update every so often, every eight eight years or so, depending on the, the specific timelines. And so with that, we're scheduling a workshop study session on 428. And so 
we have to hit a deadline this summer to finalize it. And part of that, there's a public outreach effort and also, um, you know, coordination with the planning commission and the city council. So on 428, so that, that second meeting in February, there'll be um, kind of a study shop on how we're trying to increase density. Basically, the state's really trying to figure out, you know, they need the homes, where are we going to fit everybody? And so the push is really to increase density um, where we can. And so you'll see where the land use map, we're going to change some of the land use mapping where uh, maybe you see some R2 go to R3, maybe some of these areas that are office commercial that, um, that aren't um, maybe o overstated from 2004, now switched to more of a residential trying to find um, locations to fit the housing needs assessment. Gosh, what else do I got? Um, so that's just a lot of work and not too much fun stuff, but um, oh, pending work on the growth policies and the Lincoln East specific plan. So, so harder specific plans coming up, that's a big thing. And then also the growth policies with the city. I think I, I talked about that a little bit, but I'm working with, um, with my side and the attorney and trying to figure out um, these old 2004 policies, how to update those to match and be in line with current times and, and current plans. And so there, there, there'll be some um, discussion on that and I'm sure that will trickle through to the planning commission level depending on how we process that through workshops or recommendations as we update those policies. Um, so in the building world, you know, I was trying to, there's a lot going on with Ample Health finishing up and, and the New Haven Court project finishing up. Um, and then if you see during the daytime, the uh, Mormon church is really, temple is really coming together. It's amazing how fast um, they got the concrete panels up on the side. Um, but the two big things that I, I pulled off the plan check review list right now is a Dollar Tree. So a new Dollar Tree, um, I don't know what the excitement level is from staff, but it's, it's there at, at the Pier 1 is where they're coming in. So they're in the Walmart Center. Um, so there, there's a TI, a tenant improvement to come into that. And we're trying to find out if it's a new or is it a, a move, relocation? Yeah, we haven't heard. We were trying to get from the applicant if it was a, a move from the Bridge Street one or, or a second one. Um, and then primetime nutrition in the Carriage Square Center there. And so I didn't get the exact project description for that one. I'm looking over here, but I, I think it's kind of a supplement little store and, and, and different things there. Um, Holiday Inn Express, we got our fingers crossed. We worked through some agreements and sent that over. The plans are sitting ready to, to go. And so I know there's been some discussions with the contractor and the owner trying to secure financing, but we're, uh, we're, we're optimistically waiting for that to be pulled. So planning commission meeting. So just put, I would go ahead and target it, um, 414. So the, the first meeting in April, we're shooting for that harder meeting. And then 428 is the housing element and possibly the CIP. So annually we do um, um, our capital improvement um, project review for the city's budget. And so the 428 meeting is going to go for sure. The 414 meeting may slip, but I would go ahead and reserve it on your calendars um, in, in, regarding the harder project. And hopefully with, um, with a lot a lot of the, um, I'm going to take any comments or information that came out of the meeting today and try to add to it with school districts and housing costs and whatever else I could add to that. And so with that, it's really um, a lot of work and questions and answers and, you know, I'm going to keep things going here. Through the chair. Ben, did you say Dollar General was going to be on Bridge Street and they might Move. No, no, no. And so the Dollar Tree. Oh, Dollar Tree. So, so I, when we saw the application come through, I was curious if the Dollar Tree on Bridge Street there behind Little Caesars uh -huh. was moving or if they're going to add a new one. Oh, it's Dollar Tree, not Dollar General. Correct. Okay, got it. That's totally different. <laughs> yes, yes. Any other questions? Through the chair, just a quick question. Were you able to resolve with DD about the sign? You know, I actually just looked at that um, sign today. And so um, they, they, it was, you know, I sent a friendly email out that says, hey, we look forward to uh, working with you afterwards. And they responded with a compromised sign is how they like to say it. <laughs> and, um, you know, but I, I, and I actually, exactly. I, I actually thought it was kind of a nice product. It, it wasn't oversized for that space. And so instead of being the 177, it was 192. They added the Bridge Street side. Um, you, you know, we're, I'm trying to get them to um, spruce up the lighting on it a little bit. And so, um, so I think we came to a nice compromise decision. Right. Every time I drive by there, that 
I'm now looking at the fire. And I was talking to my husband, and he goes, really? Do you want it bigger than that? No. So I made a good decision by our part. And the other one I wanted to get an update on, how about that hotel that we approved about a year, year or so ago on the 99 there, right before you get You know, I have not heard anything since COVID. You know, right before COVID, there was getting some traction when the economy was kind of going and heard about the temple. There was a couple, that hotel was kind of wanting to renew its use permit and then also um, another potential site. And I think just with the, the financing and the, and the terms of it, I, I haven't heard anything since then. So um, my fingers are crossed, you know, that we... Um, Maybe with the Recovery Act and um, and business getting back to normal with vaccinations, that it kind of gets going. Yeah, it was, it was a beautiful design, so I sure yeah. I sure hope it gets built. It would look gorgeous from coming down the 99 or up yeah. the 99. And he actually added to it with purchasing the properties around it and was going to come back and have yep. a bigger banquet hall. So uh, I, I, my fingers are crossed because that would be a great and would add to that Civic Center extension and kind of clean up that back entrance there to the. Um, to the holiday, whatever, what is it, West Onsot Road? So fingers crossed, but I haven't heard anything for a while. Gotcha. Thank you. Great questions. Commissioner Adams? Yes. Ben, um, on the housing element, are you finding quite a bit of pushback uh, from HB, uh, let's say direction from HCD in regards to the R1 zoning? And are they asking you to uh, do any reduction under that component? of your housing element? You know, so that's a great question. Um, what I, so we're contacting with a consultant placeworks that's, that's done many of these and working directly with HCD. And um, what they've told me so far is that, um, that we're somewhat um, um, cutting edge with our density, believe it or not, with the two to eight versus um, a lot of other areas. And so they like they like the higher density allowed in the R1. And so what, what I've told them, um, to be blunt on my side, is that, hey, it's been this make-believe thing before where they just shove R3 off to the side. And then when, you, when people start to develop, they say, well, we don't really want R3 to turn into R1. And so um, what I'm trying to do is say, hey, let's try to be real Let's try to start out with um, with places like um, the housing authority. They're zoned R2. Really, they'd love to be R3, so that's easy win. Um, oh, but the old Fremont Hospital area, there's some land there where they're going to knock it down. Um, I've talked to the, the, the developers, the owner's rep, and they would love that option to help market that site to be able to do a higher density. So we're kind of cherry-picking spots like that. And then looking at a realistic number to reevaluate the whole site, um, but it, but it is it, it is tough because a lot of this stuff was put in these huge swaths for um, high density that, that just aren't real, and so I don't know how we're gonna work into it exactly. So I'll I'll find out more and definitely good questions for the workshop. And then what about the ADU component? I don't know if you guys have addressed that yet or not, or if you're looking at adding more of that in your zoned areas have you thought about that component as well so definitely um definitely it's on our hit list uh, so state law pretty much made it required in residential zoning even though our code is not up to date and so with with this update with the housing element in the land use plan we're, we're following up with a zoning change to reflect that and then also incorporate those accessory dwelling units um you know i don't know if it's real or not i think everybody has my, my take, I mean, this has been a paradigm here on my soapbox, but it, it's really, um, you know, they're giving them free for all where on the setbacks, the heights, no parking, you could shove them in wherever you want. But, but in reality, can anybody afford, you know, to, it still costs you 200,000 bucks to build this thing. And is it, is it nice enough to do it? Um, so in the financing on it. So some of those workshops are interesting on trying to, how to figure out the financing to do it. Has Cal Home had any traction on their, Program, do you know? I mean, I, I haven't seen any yet, so I didn't know if you'd seen something different for their ADU grants that they were uh, promoting and awarded. I, I'm, you know, I'd have to look into it, Lori, to be honest. Okay. Okay. I haven't seen any on my side, so I just thought maybe you had a. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. I mean, what we have right now is we're, we're getting ready to, to divvy out the. Um, CDBG CV, and then and, and looking at some of this Recovery Act money, how it's coming through, and, and the, the earmarks right now 
if there's a push for earmarks, I've come back into play um, for projects, um, for infrastructure, and then um, and then some funding. And my understanding is there is a big chunk of funding that will come through the CDBG entitlement process formula. And so, but I don't know exactly how the strings are going to be attached yet. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Commissioner Dasher. Uh, no questions of Ben. Thank you. Okay. With that, thank you, Ben. We'll move to if any of our city uh, planning commissioners have any updates on any items they'd like to share. I can update. None. Uh, we will move to our liaison. Oh, the liaison. <laughs> Sounds like something out of a Jack Benny radio show. Um, at the Southern County Planning Commission, we met March 17th. Uh, first public hearing was a tentative parcel map approval, and it was 40 acres divided into uh, two acre home sites. This would be at 3168 Nor'Easter Road, and the remaining parcel. Uh, approximately 38 acres will remain as ag wow. in that specific area. Uh, that was a subject of discussion at the meeting here two meetings ago where we talked about that first came into the Planning Commission and then this is the update from that accepting of the uh, um, tentative map, parcel map. Uh, made a modification in the zoning code text uh, to allow certain types of outdoor commercial entertainment and recreation use types by use permit only through the Planning Commission for general commercial and commercial entertainment. Uh, this would be things like over a weekend or it might go for a week at a time, nothing permanent, just by use permit for the activity for a specified period. Um, the Planning Commission of the county accepted, uh, reviewed, and commented on the county's housing element and uh, acted, and now it goes to uh, HCD for its 60-day uh, statutory review. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. So hearing no other action or items, uh, we'll go ahead and See you back here maybe on the 14th of April. Otherwise, 840, we're adjourned. <laughs>